Well, it's a nice rainy day out here today, which is good. It's Saturday, which means I get to stay inside the house and kind of work on radios, which I like to do mostly. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, let, let old man rain just pour away and, and we'll go ahead and continue stripping that cabinet. The cabinet is totally stripped now, and I'm going to go ahead and give it one last wipe down with a nice clean rag all over to include the inside. I'm just going to go ahead and soak that rag real good, then just start giving it that one last wipe down which gets any residue off, any, any little bit of final finish. Just take your time on this last wipe down, you know. Go over it with a fine tooth eye. You know, make it make it as good as you can. Incidentally, when you're doing this last uh, wipe down and you put a quite a bit of uh, lacquer thinner on your clean rag, you know it's always a good idea to wear some kind of eye protection when you do this because sometimes this stuff will snap up and. And cause a speck to get up near your eye. You know, lacquer thinner is a is pretty, pretty, you know, caustic stuff. It's pretty toxic. That's why you want to keep it off your skin if possible. And uh, definitely keep it away from your eyes. So be careful. Actually, it's probably a good idea. Well, it is a good idea to use eye protection anytime you use this stuff as, you know, as, a, as a cleaning agent. And of course, the inside, you know, it's, it's very important. To get your inside nice and clean, you know, there's no sense in, uh, it's looking real good in there now, I've about got it all stripped down and cleaned. Uh, the inside's going to be pretty rough on these old cabinets, you know, it's going to be rough looking and this got all kinds of stuff you're going to find there, but do the top, the sides, the front, and the bottom, you know, there's not, I've seen, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at uh, nice radios being sold on eBay as having been restored. And the inside of the cabinet, you know, it just looks like a garbage scowl. Uh, there's just no need for that. I mean, if you're going to restore the radio, clean it inside and out. You know, like my mama used to say, get behind those ears. Now I'll let her dry for a few hours. And down here in the corner, we have another piece of veneer that the cabinet has decided to get rid of. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to stick me a little glue down in there and clamp that thing down. And we will not do any toning or any filling or anything until that veneer is glued down. Again, patience. Take your time. There's never any rush. Now some of these spots right here, right here and right here, is some kind of filler they put in at the factory. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. And uh, this, I, I took it off of one spot and found that there's a little bit of a dent right there, a low spot. They use some kind of a stuff here to... To level that out but anyway all we're going to do is take some of this Constantine paste wood filler I'm going to use dark oak this time and all I'm going to do is spoon some out with a regular spoon you know and now if you buy some of this doesn't matter which brand it is probably but I, I like Constantine's uh, it thins down if it starts to ever get thick on you uh, you can thin it down with uh, gum turpentine mineral spirits or naphtha you know just get you some clear mineral spirits and uh, if it ever gets too thick but you know you can just take some out with your spoon just kind of spoon a little bit put a glob right there I tried to mix it up as much as I could the rest I'll have to do on the cabinet itself and then all you do is you go you know across the grain across the grain and then then caddy corner the grain okay and, and smush it down in there you know make that old I use that credit card again or that old gift card just smush it down in there and drag it on across. So this is, you've seen me do this before. Just kind of, some of it, this thing is kind of lumpy for some reason. It got lumpy, I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. You know, we just squished them lumps out right there on top of it. You know, it's not a showstopper. Okay, we'll just go ahead and squinch it right on across. Then we can go caddy corner of the grain, like that. Like that, we're just going to smush it down in there. Now, fine grain wood uh, does not need wood filler. It does not need a grain filler is actually what I'm doing. I'm filling the grain to give it a nice smooth surface for finishing. Now, uh, matter of fact, it even says on the can, uh, let me see, it says, uh, I think it was said certain grains, yeah, here we go, 
Filler may be used on open grain woods such as ash, mahogany, walnut, and oak. Close, close grained woods such as maple and cherry do not require a filler. Okay? Alright, now, once I get to this curved part, I'm not going to be using this. I'm just going to take a rag right here. I'm going to dip it in the can and then I'm going to just kind of swirl it in, okay, all the way along the edge and try to get some filler in there all the way around, all the way around as much as I can. And we're also going to fill the sides and this side and run a little, just a little bit up and down these uh, fluted columns. Not very much, not very much. And then uh, I'm going to stay away from the front here. I probably won't run the grain too much closer than that right there or the filler. And then just kind of be very careful going along this edge right here. I don't want really to get any on any part of this front uh, veneer. So we're going to be working on that for a while. And this is how you do the edges, at least the way I do it. You, know, you may have a different way of doing it. That's much better. Use what works best for you. Remember, all of you are always, no matter what I do, all of you are always expected to do better. Whether it be chassis, tubes, component replacement, cabinet finishing, I don't care. Whatever it is, alignment procedure, all of you are expected to do better. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, let this dry for a while. I still have to do the side and then we'll go ahead and start wiping it off. I just took some 600 grit paper and sanded down the top of this radio to get some of that uh, wood filler smoothed out. Looks real good, you know. It was just a uh, 600 grit is very very fine. It didn't really get into the veneer. However, you know, when you do that sort of thing, after you've had your filler and you sand it down, that's when the radio begins to tell you more of its story. Most of the cabinets do anyway. This one in particular. You, this entire side was missing. We replaced it. And here's why it was missing. Look at all that water damage right there. All that ripple. All the way down here, that's all water damage to about, well, actually all the way. And it's holding fast. It's nice and secure. It's not coming up. Now, you know, some people say, oh, man, that's, that's no good. I can't, I can't live with that. Well, I can, and I'll tell you why, because that's the radio's character. You all who watch my videos know today. You know, I, I put a lot of stock in the radio's character. I don't want it to look like it just came off an assembly line. Uh, in my mind, the worst thing that can happen is somebody come up and say, oh, is that a reproduction? You know, that, is, that would be terrible. <laughs> I want them to walk up and immediately know that this is, you know, an original vintage radio, and they say, hey, who restored that thing? It looks pretty good. You know, that, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for when people make a comment on a radio, you know. Is that a reproduction? <laughs> the staining has begun with this radio. I'm going to go ahead and stain the inside of the cabinet first, all the new wood that I put in. It doesn't have to be, you know, spectacular and everything. The idea here is to just stain it up, make it look halfway decent on the inside. So it like, doesn't look like a trash bucket, like I said. Pretty much I'm going to let the stain set for a long time and then go ahead and wipe it down a little bit and see what happens. I'm using uh, dark walnut by the way. I'm also putting dark walnut on the outside of the cabinet and the reason for that is so I can save on toner. You know, there's no need to have to use a ton of toner to get the cabinet dark when I can use a little stain to help me out. That toner is not cheap, you know. Old Sky Carl, uh, he wrote a response that said, you know, watching these old cabinets get cleaned up and and stripped and stained and, and you know, it, it's almost like magic watching them come back to life and look really nice. And he's right. It, it is. It's almost like watching magic. It really is. It, it just, they just look so beautiful underneath. Getting around these fluted columns, uh, is probably the most difficult thing here and it's not all that difficult really. The, the, uh, the key here to doing something like this on the columns don't use a lot of stain. All you're looking for is to get it dark and don't go right up against the paper. You don't need to put your stain right on the paper. Just get as close as you can you know without doing all that. Now down here I touched it and I didn't want to. I wasn't watching what I was doing but it's still okay. Get as close as you can and go down each one. Take your time take your time and of course never forget the back edging on your radio you go on eBay and look at a lot of radios that the owners claim to that they have restored 
and then turn it around and look at the chassis and look at the back edges and everything of the of the cabinet and they just look horrible they just look horrible don't let that happen to you all right that's it I'll now give it the final wipe down with a clean rag and then we'll let it set for 24 hours it's time to slap some toner on this baby now I had my choice between Van Dyke Brown extra dark walnut and I also had you know perfect brown but perfect brown would have been too light I think so between the extra dark and the Van Dyke I think I'll go with the Van Dyke now this is M 101 on both cans and that means it's opaque it means you can't see through it. it's not supposed to be translucent but if you put it on thin enough uh, it, it'll give you a certain amount of you know translucent effect and uh, had that been M100 on both cans it would have been translucent or see-through toner this 101 is the opaque and I learned that from Bob Anderson I didn't know that there was a 100 and a 101 and what that meant so you know I learned that from watching one of his videos he's very sharp if you've never watched a Bob Anderson video I recommend you do so that's a n d e r s e n Bob Anderson sharp individual good repairman excellent TV repairman all right here we go now I'm not going to put this on very heavy you know there's no need to put it on very heavy this toner Temperature is a little rough out here today. I probably shouldn't even be painting, but I'm just going to put it on lightly. See what happens. I may have to wind up doing a little sanding before it's over. What I'm going to do is put a quick shot of toner where it needs to go, and then take it in the house and let it dry. For some reason, I got a little bit of blotchiness along here. I don't know what caused that. So... That is going to be unacceptable. You can see it's not an even color. But you know, such things don't concern us one iota. When we have this sort of thing happen, we just go ahead and remove it and start again. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of lacquer thinner, not a whole lot, put it on a rag. Give it a little fold here. You just come up here and start stripping it back down again. Not a problem. Now, this is going to happen. If you finish a radio, I talked to a guy up in Canada who refinishes several hundred radios a year. And he told me, he said, man, I can't tell you how many times we've had to remove the finish because it didn't turn out well. Well, I guess I'm in his league. Well, that's it for the toning, folks. I have returned it to the dark side. Anyway, it turned out really good, I think. I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah, I'm going to have to take some 1,000 grit paper and very lightly go over that, very lightly. And then I'll go ahead and remove this paper on the front, put a little stain on there, I think a little golden oak, just lay it on with a rag on the end of my finger, just enough to color it and get it one color. I'll put some, uh, I'm going to put some sealer on that. I didn't have to put too much sealer on this, or any sealer actually, because I was just going to tone it until it covered it all up. But on the front, I want to put the sealer on because I don't want any blotchiness from the very light oak stain. It, you know, it's, chances are it won't happen, but I'm not going to take a chance. It is the next day, and as usual, before putting my stain on the wood here, I'll be get, putting the old Minwax pre-stain treatment to it, now, once you put it on, you got two hours to do your staining. It's very thin. It soaks in very good. And uh, sometimes, uh, after I went ahead and put the stain treatment on, I didn't even bother to stain it. It just looked so good, just the way it was. I just let it dry, and then I went ahead and put my clear uh, lacquer finish over the top. So we'll see what happens. But in case I do decide to stain it, I'm going to go with the Golden Oak this time. Normally, I go with my favorite, which is called Gunstock. But that's going to be, I think, a little bit too dark. And there's not really a whole lot of difference between Gunstock and Golden Oak. So we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to have a nice finish on here just by using the, uh, the pre-stain treatment. We'll see. All you do is dip the old brush in on the pre-stain treatment. You don't have to be uh, real careful about it that much. It just soaks right in. And just, just pour it to it, that's all. You don't have to sweat too much. That's why you do your dark staining first. You do your dark staining first, 
And that way, if you get anything else on the dark stain, it won't show up. Alright, we've got her all covered. Now we'll just let her set for, oh, maybe an hour. Just let it soak in until it's dry. Now once it's dry, or pretty much dry, we take a rag and wipe off the excess. And then we just go ahead and stain it right over the top. I'm applying the golden oak. Apparently we're going to have some unevenness in wood color along this one edge right here. I hope it's not too prominent where everybody can see it. That'll kind of torque me off a little bit. But yeah, it's all part of the game. You know how it is, you know. Well, let me go ahead and finish. I'm just using a little bit on my finger with a rag. I'm not putting a ton of stain on it. I just want to kind of rub it around a little bit. And I didn't want the front to be this dark again. I don't know why. I always wind up with dark fronts with this stain nowadays. This is supposed to be a golden oak stain. I don't know why it's not. It's still pretty light, but I'd like it to be a whole lot lighter. You'll notice down along the side edges here, this is glue. That was left over from when they they put this uh, these two fluted columns in. So what I may have to do is get a little light colored toner. I have some, and do a little toning on the front here to try to even things up. And and also the wood is two different colors here. You run into this uh, two different color jazz a lot on these old radios. The type of lacquer they used was thick enough to make it all look like one color. We're having to try to duplicate that in today's day and age. It can be done, but ultimately what it does is make the front of the cabinet or whatever wood it is you're trying to uh, even up. It ultimately makes it darker, which I, I, you know, I just don't like that at all. But I did buy some very light toner, so we'll see what happens there. Meanwhile, I've gone over the entire cabinet with 1,000 grit paper. So as soon as we're done with the front, if we can ever get it to look halfway decent, all we're going to do is put on our <clears throat> semi-gloss Watco... Uh, clear lacquer and this radio cabinet will be done I'm going to uh, use some really light toner on this it's called uh, light walnut or colonial maple and I'm kinda hoping to lighten it up a little bit uh, this, this veneer has an awful lot of cracks here look, look at the cracks right there it's got cracks over here you know, not much you can do about stuff like that without, like I said, replacing the entire thing. Here's another crack, right, right where the uh, the two they use two pieces of veneer on this, and there's the there's the seam right there, <clears throat> and this is cracked a little bit and raised up just a tad enough to to make it just a slight bit higher. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and try to shoot a few uh, shoot a few layers of uh, this lighted light uh, colonial maple and see if it'll help any try to get some kind of a match we may not get a match on this at all unless I make it like really dark and I really don't want to you know I may have to uh, make a compromise here well as you can see it's the uh, colonial maple is clearly not working I've still got two shades of wood here I'd like to kind of get it at least a little blended you know where they match but but as I've said earlier this happens all the time in these old radios where you have two different colors a while back, I went up to visit my son in northwestern Arkansas, and there's this, I found a paint store up here that sells these Mohawk toners. He had a whole rack of them, all different colors. Well, I just kind of stocked up. And uh, this one here is a medium brown walnut. I think I'll go ahead and try it. I haven't tried it yet, and we'll see what happens. Maybe we can get some kind of a match up here. Probably not. <laughs> Worth a try, though. I'll put a couple of coats on and see what happens. The medium brown walnut blended it just a little bit more, but not exactly what I want. What I'm trying to show you here is if you don't get what you want the first time, the second time, or the third time, keep at it. Don't give up, don't quit. You know, quitters never win. So what I'm going to do is the next thing I'm going to, the compromise I'm going to have to make is I'm going to have to make this side darker. That's all I can do. And, uh... I'm going to use perfect brown, but then again, it's not going to be a perfect match. I mean, there's going to be some difference in the color of the wood when I'm done, but not as dramatic as what you see here. We'll use perfect brown next. Well, I just gave it a shot with uh, some perfect brown. And it did darken it up just a tad, but we're still not getting, uh, you know... The matching sides I want. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to keep experimenting here just to see what happens. I have some dark red mahogany. Let me give that a shot here in a minute see what that does. 
you know, and if it just doesn't work out, <clears throat> well, it just doesn't work out, but we do not worry. Son of a gun, I do believe we are making some progress here. We're starting to get an even color across. That's pretty slick. This old, uh, what is it at? The cherry. This dark red mahogany, rather. We'll go ahead and shoot that a little bit more and see what happens. Yeah, she's blending in a lot better. Come over this way a little bit. Give it a few light shots. You notice I'm pretty much staying away from it. I'm not real close to it now. Well, that's looking real nice. 